So the height that I got was around, uh, I would say, three hundred plus. So looking at the current market scenario, I would say that I'm not sure about the hike that you can expect. But yes, you can definitely ask for hundred percent to two hundred percent hike if you are transitioning your role into data engineering because it is a very hot skill that companies are looking. That's why they tend to take help me, and that way I got to learn a lot about what is in depth into data engineering, which helped me crack multiple companies. Hey folks, welcome to Trendy Tech. This is Mansa Nagraj, and here I am with a wonderful journey of a young and a dynamic data engineer, Isha. Well, her success story would be an inspiration to a whole lot of you young budding data engineers out there. She had backed multiple offers from top tech companies internationally as well, and now working in one of the top product-based company, Visa. So let's learn from her experience and appreciate her success. So, hi Isha, a very warm welcome. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, making some time out to share your valuable experience with our viewers today. Uh, well, I cannot. Uh, kind of appreciate you enough for that outstanding efforts uh, to be able to crack multiple offers, and I can literally see the efforts that has gone in there. Um, so yeah, without further ado, I would request you to give a brief introduction about yourself, and uh, really can't wait to get to know your journey. Thank you, Mansa. Thank you for such a warm welcome and inviting me for this podcast. So um, I have graduated in 2019, and I have done my BTech in Information and Technology. Uh, from Guru Gobind Singh in the Prast University, and uh, since my grad, like since my uh, B Tech, I was like interested into coding, but I never went into like uh, competitive programming. So then uh, I was hired by Shell as a fresher, so I joined Shell. Then I worked there for three point five years, and then I have recently moved to Visa. So we'll be talking about Visa today. And uh, apart from on this, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it was a very great journey with Trendy Tech. I would say, like uh, one of my colleagues recommended me this course, and yes, it has proved to be fruitful. Maybe I'll share more glimpses about it and how it my journey was in the upcoming uh, upcoming uh, time. Yeah. Yeah, sure. That's nice. Um, well, as you said, um, uh, I mean, like I would like to know how did this all start off? Uh, like wanting to be a data engineer. Um, you were an information science graduate, right? And uh, how did you develop that interest for coding and to work on data as such? So uh, I was into information technology, which was more of like computer science engineering. And then, uh, like I was uh, from my very beginning, like from my uh, school time itself, from my eleventh standard, I had computer science. I was like I had Python at that time, and I was very much excited about the uh, about the things capability of coding. So I was very much excited into coding, and I used to do some pro- some kind of programming, but not very high end uh, competitive programming as such. And uh, then uh, like I was uh, from very beginning, I was interested into coding etc. So then whenever I got the chance, I moved into that yeah. So uh, yeah. Great yeah. Um, well, as a uh, you know, like even from your school days, you were pretty much interested in uh, coding. Nice. So, uh, what were your preparation strategies uh, to get to the top tech companies, um, especially as a data engineer? Like, um, I mean, when did you start off your preparation to get to this role? Uh, so, it, my journey started as of a software engineer. So, I started working as an Angular and Java developer, and then uh, there was a reshape in my organization, my first organization. And there was a new, uh, complete branch being formed for data engineers. So I was like very much. Uh, I've ho- I heard the word about data, big data. So I was uh, like excited to know about the capabilities of it. So I moved into that team, like internal role shift kind of thing, and moved into data engineering. So I did some small certifications because uh, in uh, my organization it was all Azure about Azure data engineering. So it was a migration project. And I would say I started off with the uh, Azure uh, data engineering certifications, etc., at the organization level. I started working up there, and for two years I worked as Azure data engineer into migration. But then slowly and steadily, I came to realize that somewhere I was lacking the knowledge because working on cloud will give you a top level view, but what is going on inside was lacking. So at that time, when I discussed all these things with my colleague, he recommended me this course with uh, Sumit sir. And then now, uh, I like uh, when I interacted with the Trendy Tech team and they explained me the curriculum and the way they teach. So I was like, it was a perfect match because it, how earlier when I was looking at the internet, there are so many resources available for big data. But a channelized kind of course would help, like helped me to learn from uh, very basic to the top level, like how cloud came, 
to uh, th- that journey in that journey tend to help me and that way i got to learn a lot about what is in depth into data engineering which helped me crack multiple companies yeah excellent so uh, what as per you was uh, the benefit of taking the course and what was your knowledge level before taking the course and after uh, taking the masters program big data masters program especially into the distributed processing um, how, how yeah. well equipped do you think you were um, into projects once you completed the course so uh, i was majorly working into cloud technology and they were uh, uh, looking like it was more kind of a pa- uh, set pattern which we were following like we were just migrating the da- uh, the tables the structured tables from on prem to cloud so there was not much of uh, learning there that i came to, but initially it was a learning because i stepped into data engineering world for the first time it was uh, like kind of learning curve but then uh, when it came uh, back again to optimization and other things that i uh, lacked knowledge i kind of lacked knowledge because i didn't knew what all things are going on into in back end so whenever i was developing my code into cloud it was more of like you can say uh, i didn't knew how to read the dag how to do the optimizations etc and what is going in the back end how my resources are getting allocated all these things i everything was a question mark for me then um, like looking one thing into google and implementing that and that way uh, that kind of then give me a holistic view so in this way the course started the course helped me a lot because it it started from very scratch and then slowly slowly we build the concept so it kind of gives you a holistic view about what is data engineering so that you can learn more advanced topics with the basic knowledge that you have into this co- in in this course nice yeah a structured approach of learning things and also the strong fundamentals which is very much necessary to explore the advanced topics as well yeah excellent um, isha and uh, just want to take it on a lighter end now uh, that uh, you you started off your journey with shell right as a data engineer internal uh, uh, switch was there and uh, how did you like kind of uh, after completing about like week 14 is when you would have started uh, applying for the companies as well externally so how did you uh, try to draft your resume work on your resume what were the key things that you had in mind while drafting the resume yeah sure so i uh, i was like uh, uh, i started my interviewing process uh, like i started my course in january 2022 23 january and then i started giving interviews in may so it was not a very smooth journey for me so there were many hiccups in between so what happened i i got very much tempted to give the interviews because i've learned so many concepts and i want to give the interview i didn't wait for week 14 i would say and then uh, what happened is i i kind of uh, uh, like i was rejected in two to three companies and my morale was very much down and then i uh, like tried kind of interacted with the trendy tech people they motivated me again i geared up my shoes and then again i started with the course and finally i got my first offer in august 2022 so uh, like uh even drafting about drafting the resume i would say uh, like in my mind i was always clear that the interviewer will not have so much time to read three four pages about me with just less than uh, three years of experience so in my mind it was clear i have to make it short and crisp crisp because i was also taking interviews in shell so i knew that interviewer won't read everything because they want to listen on things from you they don't want to read it on a piece of paper so it was clear in my mind that i have to make it short and i have to add value so uh, the first the only uh, tip that i would like to give is that which i have ordered was instead of uh, telling what you have done please add a value to it so uh, for example i have de- uh, developed the pipeline this could be one thing that a person has written but writing that developed the pipeline which saved this much cost to my company or this much manpower or this much time this way it will help your resume be at the top so this would give you an edge and then um, writing your it's not uh, necessary to write all the projects that you have done because in one page you cannot well, like fit in no uh, all the uh, projects that you have done write the most effective one which would impact your profile for the current job opening that you are uh, drafting for also you cannot follow one resume policy because every company has this kind of different kind of profi- profile profile so you have to change your resume according to the description given the job role so that way i followed excellent yeah true i agree on that whatever the x factor as in uh, your work what uh, performance gains that uh, it gave to the company uh, that was that is yeah. a very important thing that you'll have to highlight in the resume 
Excellent, uh, Isha. And uh, the next thing that I would like to know is, um, uh, you know, like which are the platforms that you majorly applied on to, uh, you know, like for the companies, um, like whether it was LinkedIn or now Cree or which were the platforms that you sought for? So I started off applying to LinkedIn because it was I had a habit of uh, like uh, opening LinkedIn daily. So it was very easy there, like uh, in the jobs option, I we could apply. So I started off from there. And then uh, after getting my first offer, which was from Dubai, I uh, like kind of uh, uh, started looking up, um, like my, uh, I started made, I made my profile in Nokri and then, um, yeah, Nokri and LinkedIn, these were the two. And uh, yes, some of the companies that I knew are good into data engineering and are doing good things. I went into their career sites and then I started applying there directly. And uh, the fourth thing that I did was uh, like I connected with people working in the company that I want to apply for and I asked them for, this, for reference. So these are the four things I did. Nice. Yeah. You pretty much covered all the aspects of like applying for the job interviews. Nice. Okay. So uh, coming to the technical concepts a little bit, what were the major, uh, you know, like uh, technical aspects that were you were mostly interviewed for in all the interviews that you attended? Like which are the major big data concepts um, or technologies that you were interviewed for? So, um, like uh, mostly the interviews for the product based companies, it started off with the data structure and algorithm. So first was that, and then now uh, next, uh, uh, like it was it was kind of filtering criteria for most of the product based company, like a kind of test for data structure and algorithms and SQL questions. And then um, second round went on for again, like it depends on company to company, but again either DSA or then they start with Spark concepts. And then uh, you can say Hive, if you're, if you're good at Hive, you're written in resume and there is a requirement for Hive and they might ask you Hive questions. Then some companies went into the depth of asking MapReduce, like the internals of MapReduce. Some companies specifically asked me to do, perform uh, some coding questions in uh, for big data uh, into uh, in using MapReduce. So like using RDDs, etc. So some companies went into the granule level and then there was Spark, then there were optimization techniques and then there were like a lot of SQL concepts were there and then some uh, basic system design was there, I would say. Yeah, these are the concepts. Nice. But I see that a lot of people get overwhelmed with the data structures. They're literally scared of like, how, what are the questions asked? So what do you think as per you? Are, are they like the basic questions or like do they dig into the advanced part of it as well? So again, that depends from which tier companies are you touching. So if you're going at tier one, Google, Amazon, Facebook, fan companies, there they are heavily asking you data structure and, and, and algorithms like uh, in very depth, like they'll go to advanced topics like trees, tries, etc. And then again, if you come to the uh, to the second tier companies, they would they would want data structure algorithms, but they want you to have concept of it. Even if you are like able to tell them that this is the concept that I'm following or write the pseudo code, that would be enough for some companies. And then uh, mostly companies where I gave interview for, they, they, there was a set of questions like some were easy questions, some were medium question, questions, but no one went to hard level, I would say. Of the data structures and columns, yeah. So majoring the concepts uh, that uh, they were asking were either arrays, strings, or linked list entries. So, so near about the basics. So. Yeah. All right. So um, I mean, now I cannot let you go without asking this question. Um, what are the different rounds of interview in Visa? If you could cover it at a high level for all of our viewers. So uh, the first um, round uh, was a hackering test that I got. So that consisted consisted of uh, DSA question, data structure and algorithm question, and then SQL concepts and some uh, MCQs kind of thing uh, around uh, big data. So these this was the first round hackering test. Then um, after tiering this, uh, there was second round which was uh, entirely Java coding based, and then uh, like they were testing my uh, D DSA like data structure and algorithms. And then it was not very difficult, I would say it was kind of easy questions that they asked me. And uh, then second round uh, was uh, again into SQL queries and then Spark concepts and then around big data. And then there was kind of some confusion that the second interviewer thought that I, were, I was not very much comfortable into Java. They were specifically looking for person who knew Java. 
so then they wanted to take a third round again for java because they wanted to make sure like second interview gave the feedback that i uh, was not like very well versed in java so i i had a third round but this is very much optional like this is not very um, this is not a set pattern that they take a third round for java then there was a third round for java in which they asked me um, he asked me just one question it was just like 20 30 minutes round and that's it and then the fourth round was a managerial round which consisted of again like the uh, system uh, the design that we follow in my previous company like discussing about then that and then some of the managerial questions were there in uh, that last round and something like he was trying to uh, do a cultural fit kind of round that's it yeah one to one hour 15 minutes it lasted for these were the four five rounds yeah three to four rounds are common around every come to right um well yeah i would like to know like what it is like to work on a live real time big data project in the industry like um uh, is there anything that uh, every day you have to learn something new and in uh, introduce incorporate it implement it or um, how is it uh, to work on the real time projects so i believe that into um, it it's like you have to learn daily if you have to be at the top of your uh, role so learning never stops that is true and then uh, working in a real time project so right now i get such high volumes of data and i get get so much uh, like so much uh, space to get my hands dirty that i can try out various optimization techniques i could follow some things like that i learned in the course so this way i am getting to like blend my uh, concepts are getting strong with all these uh, with getting a chance to work on the real time project and then uh, i would say that uh, like implementing learning doing the course and then implementing into real time project it's a, like it's a, a very much different because uh, like if it, when you're trying to implement into real time your uh, concepts get like very strong i would say uh yeah nice yeah awesome uh well uh, finally i would like to understand okay before i could get to the final question also i would like a little curious about uh, the high percentage that you received uh, from your previous ctc if you could mention and also yeah. if you could let us know what is the average ctc hike that one can expect uh, once they transition into the data engineering domain uh so the hike that i got was around uh, i would say 300% i would say and then uh, like it was very uh, like it's not uh, like directly the company will review it's like if you have some offers then only you can buy again and you can get to that level and looking at the current market scenario i would say that i'm not sure about the hike that you can expect but yes you can definitely ask for 100% to 200% hike if you are transitioning your role into data engineering because it is a very hot skill that companies are looking for right yeah nice uh, so finally um i would like to um, know from your end what should one focus on while wanting to be a successful data engineer if you could give us some tips on that for our viewers so uh, the only tip that i would like to give is be consistent and don't lose hope and just do it daily and don't expect don't wait for expect result so quickly just follow the things that you are doing and you will get it somehow yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Isha. Thank you for the, uh, you know, like whatever that you shared with us, experiences. It, I definitely feel that a lot of our viewers would be benefiting from that. And uh, congratulations again on that exceptional success. And uh, wishing you a loads of uh, success in your in your future endeavors as well. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much, Manza. Well, if you found the session interesting and would like to watch more such videos related to data engineering, consider subscribing to the channel and hit on the bell icon for instant notification on new video updates.